You cannot keep the law if you add to it. That's right. You got to do what it says. You can't add things to it. And once you've done that, you've added to the law. And then you've sinned. I contend that to tell people that for them to be saved, they must be baptized with water. I contend that you have sinned. That's right. All praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai. The water for giving us another chance to push the word. Yes. The water for giving us another chance to show our love for you. Yes. The water for giving us another chance to keep the commandments. That's, That's right. 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 Nice and easy. We're going to take this slow. The doctrine of baptism. Nice and easy. Beautiful. We're going to take this slow. Beautiful. Last night, we talking to a brother, and he says, you must be baptized to be saved. I said, okay, I understand what you're saying. But God said something too. And he said, you must keep the commandments. That's right. If the law says you cannot add to or take, take away, away from the law, how can you teach that I must be baptized to be saved? That's adding to the law. Fair enough? Fair enough. If the law says you cannot add to it or take away unless you're sinning, and someone says you must be baptized to get everlasting life, they just add it to the law. Mm. That's a sin. Mm. You ever think about that? Mm. Right? That's right. That's right. Revelation 22 and 14. Let's look at something real quick. It's the book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments. Blessed are they that do his commandments. That's right. The commandments are found in the first five books of the Bible. That's right. That's right. On the last page of the Bible, it says the people that do these things are blessed. Are blessed. That's right. That's right. The commandments did not ask me to be dunked under the water. That's right. That's right. It doesn't, it doesn't say that. Read it again. Blessed are they that do his commandments. This is what our people not learning. When you teach my people that baptism is how you get saved, you lying. This is how you get saved on the last page of the Bible. Read it again. Blessed. Wait, call it and read it. God, it's the book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 14. Is there any more Bible after this? Uh -uh. What does it say? Blessed are they that do his commandments. Come on. That they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. The only way to enter into the new heavens and new earth is to keep the commandments. That's, That's right. right. The commandments did not say, thou shalt be dunked under the water. Christ said Jesus. Yep. Think about that. That's right. I didn't say getting baptized is a sin because the Bible said, did not say, thou shalt not That's right. be dunked right. under the water. That's right. I didn't say getting baptized is a sin. I said, telling people they have to be baptized to be saved is not in the Bible. That's right. Not, That's right. That's what I said. Think about it now. Think now. If you tell people they have to get baptized to be saved, you're adding to the law. Stay in Revelation 22, and I want you to, to read something for the people, right? Read verse 18. We're still right. in the end of the book. It's the book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 18. Watch this. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things. If you shall what? If any man shall add unto these things. You and? God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. This is the last page of the Bible. That's right. You cannot add to this. That's right. That's the last thing, that's the last instruction you receive. That's right. Do not add to this. Don't come later because you're a Baptist. That's right. 
and you're telling people they have to be baptized. You you added add to it. this right. because the law never said thou shalt be dunked under the water. Right. That's right. It didn't right. say that. Nowhere. I'm gonna say this again. If you get baptized, it's not a sin. But if I don't get baptized, I didn't sin either. Right, right. Paul says, where there is no law, there is no, no sin. sin. That's right. What law told me I got to get baptized? Y'all not thinking. Y'all never thought about that. This is what the Lord said. Deuteronomy 30 and go to verse 16. Okay. Listen to what the Lord said. This is God. Not Paul, who's a man like me. Right. Not Christ, who's a man like me when he taught. Right. Was a man. This is God, the Most High. Look what he said. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30 and verse 16. In that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, right and to keep hey, his right commandments. Here. Right here. Bring your Quran out. Let's get to it. That's what I thought. Read it again. The book of Deuteronomy. That's what I thought. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30 and verse 16. Read it out. And that I command thee this day mm -hmm. to love the Lord to thy God. To do what? To love the Lord thy God. This is what he said I command you this day. Read. To love the Lord thy God. And to walk in his ways and and to keep his commandments. Now what the Lord said to do, That's right. it gets better. Read on. And his statutes and and his judgments that that thou may live and multiply. Now if you want to live, if you will enter into life, what did Jesus say you got to do? Keep the Keep commandments. commandments. Where in the commandments it told me thou shalt be baptized underwater? Nowhere. Nowhere. It doesn't say it. Why you want to talk to me? Why you get mad when I bring that point out? Why you start all oh, your heretic? But what? It, but what about what it says here? And what about what it says? Wait a minute. Talk to me first. What people forget is this was written first, and people believed this and feared God in this wise, and did as this God commanded to the best of their ability with fear and trembling. That's right. And there was a later doctrine that came that you had to teach people about Christ, but. Remember, I believe this already. I'm not just going to accept what you're saying because it's bound in a book. I need to believe it. And the only way I'm going to believe it if it's just in line with this. That's right. See what I'm saying? That's right. Keep reading. Hold that. Keep reading. And the Lord thy God shall bless thee. Wait. Go to Revelation 22 and 14. <laughs> Read that again smooth. Real and smooth. the Lord thy God shall bless thee. If you keep the commandments, the Lord thy God shall bless you. Right. What does the last page of the Bible say? Right. It's the book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 14. Come on. Blessed are they that do his commandments. So in the law, it said, if you keep the commandments, the Lord will bless you. In the law. Yes, he did. And on the last page of the New Testament said, if you keep the commandments, the Lord will bless you. That's right. But our pastors and our teachers tell us the law is irrelevant. Don't worry about it. What's, I don't understand. Don't understand. I have to believe you, sir. I cannot believe the text that your doctrine is based on. That's what you're forcing me to do. Uh -huh. Read that again, brother. What do you want me to read? 16. 16. De Book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30 and verse 16. In that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways. No, read 15. It's even more impact. You got it underlined. Okay, okay. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter away. 30 and verse 15. See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil. We didn't say that. Did I say that? Say that. Uh -uh. Say the that. Lord said he did that, right? That's yeah. right. What's right. the next thing he says? In that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, uh -huh. to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments that thou mayest live and multiply. And the Lord thy God shall bless thee. Hold on. And, and the Lord shall bless you. Revelation 22 and 14. It's the book of Revelation chapter 22 verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments. Now what now? 
Where in the commandments did it say, thou shalt be dunked under the water? That's his name. La ha. That's his name. I, I ain't never seen that. I ain't seen it yet. Get me the scripture that says, do not add to or take away from this law in the law. I just want to, I just want to think, I just want to build on this for a second so that we understand the ramifications of teaching that you must be baptized to be saved. I want people to understand by you saying that what you're doing. No, no, no. And instead think I need to go back to the lab and understand these scriptures. Because when you get so bold as to say you must be baptized to be saved, you just add it to the law. That's a sin. That's right. Prove that. Uh, Deuteronomy 4 and 2. Read it. Deuteronomy 4 and 2. I'm just asking them to think. That's I'm not. I, I'm going to say it again. If you get baptized, you did not sin. But don't sin by saying, I have to get baptized. That's a sin. And I'm going to prove it. Read it. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4 and verse 2. Uh -huh. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you. Neither shall ye diminish out from it. Why? That ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. For in order for you to keep the commandments, you cannot add to them. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. So once you came and said, you must be baptized, you gave me a new commandment. Yeah, That's you right. Did. Yeah, you did. That's a whole nother can of worms. Then the brother slide, then the brother say, nope, I'm finna, I'm finna kill y'all whole doctrine. Don't even know what he's talking about. Or, or he might get fancy and say, but I, a new commandment I give you. <laughs> Not understanding that. That's right. And the brother went to first Peter. Which was the word scripture. The word scripture. You cannot keep the law if you add to it. That's right. You got to do what it says. You can't add things to it. And once you've done that, you've added to the law. And then you sin. I contend that to tell people that for them to be saved, they must be baptized with water. I contend that you have sinned. That's right. Because the Bible said you cannot add to the commandments and you gave them a new commandment that the Lord did not mention in Moses' ear. That's right. Straight like that. Very straightforward. Straight. Now, I wanted to say that before I actually teach the proper understanding of baptism. But I wanted to say that first to see if people will engage and accept that. Did I lie? La -a. La -a. Revelation 14 said the same thing Deuteronomy 30 said. That's right. Deuteronomy 4 said, don't add nothing to this book, man. Right? That's right. So now when you add to the book, you sin. That's why I can't go with your Quran. How am I going to go to your Quran? That's extra. That's right. That's right. I can't go to that. La -a. How am I going to your Kabbalah? That's extra. How am I going to your Talmud? That's more. That's extra. I'm going to go to your hadith. That's extra. I can't do that. I got to deal with this. Or else I sin. That's right. And that's the point. So what is baptism? What is it? Baptism is a figurative exercise. It is a demonstration. Right? That's right. Right now, Christ said, pick up your cross and carry me. Uh, uh. Pick up your cross and carry it. Did he not say that? He did, he did, he did, he did, he did. Am I going to be destroyed if I don't build me a wooden cross <laughs> and carry it through the street? La -a. La -a. But Jesus said to do it. That's right. He said, pick up your cross and follow me. So if I don't go and get a cross and build one and walk through the street with it, am I going to be destroyed? La -a. Because that's figurative. That's right. right. Yes? Huh? The baptism is figurative of the washing away of sin. But wait, what is sin? Transgressions of the law. First John, show them. I'm asking you to think. I, I'm going to say it again. If you get baptized, you did not sin. That's right. But to tell people they have to get water baptized, that's a sin. That's right. Because you added to the law. You can't do that. That's right. And the law said it's a sin to add to the law. That's right. He did. That's right. That's why when the man came to Christ and said, what must I do to get eternal life? He said, if you will enter into life, keep the commandments. That's straightforward. That's right. I'm just asking y'all to think. 
what you're saying. What is sin? Read. It's the book of 1 John, chapter 3, verse 4. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. If you commit sin, by definition, you have broken the law of God. That's right. right. That's right. Stop doing this. Stop saying the law of Moses. Right. That's right. 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 That's, That's right. right. Moses ain't make this up. No, That's right. right. God made the law. That's right. Moses was the orator or the speaker. It's God's law. That's right. The law is not Moses's law. That's right. That's a that's a nickname. The proper thing to call this is God's law. That's right. That's right. Read it again. God. It's the book of 1 John chapter 3 verse 4. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. Why? For sin is the transgression of the law. Sin is to break the law. That's, that's right. right. If you add to the law, you break the law. That's right. a sin. That's, that's right. right. I'm going to say it again. If you tell people they have to be water baptized to be saved, that's a sin. That's right. But what about this? But what about, wait, before you ask me that, am I right? That's right. That's how I want to deal. That's right. That's the way I want them to talk to me. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right? right. I used the analogy last night, right? To score in basketball, you gotta put the ball through the hoop, right? That's right, that's right. So if somebody come and say, how come he got three points and I got two? To, to score in basketball is to put the ball through the hoop. Well, hold on. To get three, you gotta stand back behind him. But what about this, a dunk, what about, wait. First things first, to get three, you have to be behind. See how they need to establish something first? Yeah, that's right. They think it's as simple as, what it, the principle is put the ball through the hoop. That's right. Yeah, but there's More details. Time. Right. So if the principle is follow Christ, there's details. That's right. To follow Christ is, is to follow him in earnestness and truth. That's right. That's right. To follow him in truth, it must be in accordance with the law. That's, that's right. right. See that detail? That's right. So now you have to examine what Christ said. You can't decide what he meant. That's you right. got to think about it in that lens. That's right. Well, Christ said you must be born of water. Okay, but what does that mean? You got to be dunked under the water. Now, now you sin. You just told me I have to do that figurative, traditional act to be saved, and that's added to the law. That's right. Well, I'm confused now. I don't understand. That's what you need to say. What you need to say is I don't know how to reconcile that now. Is it a contradiction? Am I wrong? Come on. Was Jesus wrong when he said that? You got to go that way. That's right. You understand? That's right. And then you take a listening posture and brothers could teach. That's right. Go to John chapter 3. You go to Ephesians 5. You go to Psalms 119 and 9. Take our time with this. I want you to fully understand what I'm saying to you. Adding to the law is a sin. The law never said thou shalt be dunked under the water. For you to tell me that for me to get the kingdom of God, I have to be dunked under the water, you just add it to the law. That's right. Because God ain't say do that. Now here come in. I know y'all got excuses. This is a, it, it's debatable. It's an argument that is as old as the Bible is. But I'm just asking you to think for a second. Did God tell you to do that? If not, for you to tell people that they have to do it, that's you. That's right. And you don't have the right to add to this law. That's right. Else you sin. That's right. Well, why was people getting baptized then? Why, why this? Why that? Okay, now you want to be taught. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Yeah. You stop debating now. And now you you you's listening. Let me see what you had to say about this now. Right. That's right. You're not challenging me. That's right. Otherwise, you have to explain how you get to add to the law. That's right. Because I challenge you first. Right. What's your question, though? Yeah. No. So, what y'all were saying about um, baptism being not the water stuff, but actually heeding to the commandments, that all makes sense. And so, I guess the question is. In trying to take heed to the commandments, when you stumble on things, right? People have issues that they, people are sinners, and they will keep sinning even if they try. I guess what's what's the thinking behind that? 
Um, like, are you still baptized if you're trying to take heed but then you fall? I'm not saying that, you know, the water baptism means anything, but just in that, I guess in taking heed, it's just trying to take heed, not necessarily succeeding all the time. Get, um, right? Is that is that the idea? Get a um, adjustment, yes. and then you get Acts 2 and 38. Let's go ahead and answer your question with the scriptures. Uh, 24 and 16. Yeah. Um, it's the book of, get, get this first. This is, it's the book of Proverbs, chapter 24 and verse 16. For a just man falleth seven times. He says, a just man. A just man. To the point that you were making the Lord. The brother's question was, with the topic of baptism, how does it go when we get baptized, not through water, but through the word, and understanding that we have to keep the commandments, what happens when we mess up keeping them? How does that tie into this? Are we still baptized? So how are we still baptized? So read this. It's the book of Proverbs, chapter 24 and verse 16. You gotta read loud because there's a lot going on. For a just man falleth. Call it and read it again. It's the book of Proverbs, chapter 24 and verse 16. For a just man falleth seven times. It says a just man falleth seven times. Uh, now you go, you should be asking, well, how can he be just if he falleth? The read what makes him just. And riseth up again. It's because he keep getting up. When he mess up, he understands he messes up and gets right back to doing the right thing. All right? Uh, that's what makes him just. Not falling and not staying in his wickedness. That's what we were talking about yesterday. When you fall, you cannot wallow in your filth. That baptism is still being effective. It's still working on right. you. Through, through your fall, it's still working on you. You don't have to go dive into water again. Right. You know what I'm saying? The fact the fact that you in your in your heart or really in your mind, which is your real heart, understand that you have to keep the commandments and improve and improve and improve, that is still showing the fact that you are baptized. Yeah. Right. Because you fail and and corrected yourself. Read this. Start at verse 36. 36? Yeah. It's the book of Acts. You get Psalm 51 and Chapter 2, verse 36. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly, assurity that, the, that God hath made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. So the, the what we're reading right now is Peter speaking to some Jews who at one point took part in Christ's death. They were a part of the people who was okay with Christ being put on the cross. They're, they're at the Feast of Pentecost right now. And he was teaching them Christ. And he's telling them, you're part of the reason that Christ is, was di died and was on that cross, read. Uh, verse 37. Now when they heard this, they were a prick in their heart. It said when, when, when they heard this, they was pricked in their heart. They and, understood like, damn, yeah. we did this, yeah. read. And said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? See, the thing that made them, made them just, and, un, and this is their baptism, they understood that was wrong. And now they're asking them, what, we, what are we supposed to do now? How do we make it right? Read. Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. And his simple answer was to repent and be baptized in Christ. Read. For the remission of sin. For the remission of sin. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Turn right. from your wicked ways and keep the commandments. And you will receive the Holy Spirit in the right. name of Christ. Go to Acts 3 and 19. God, this is the book of Acts. Chapter 3 verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted. See, the true baptism is repentance. Once you turn from your way, you understand what you did was what was wrong. And you turn from your ways and go back to serving the living God and having faith in his uh, His son, Yahweh Shai. Well, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, but we would know him as Yahweh Shai. That's the name he would have heard when he was walking this earth. Uh, read this. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 51, starting at verse 15. See, this is the, uh, the mighty prophet King David. Read. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. Uh -huh. For thou desirest not sacrifice. You desire not what? Not sacrifice. What is the most high desire? Else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering, the sacrifices of God, 
or a broken spirit. What's the sacrifices of God? A, a broken, broken spirit. spirit. And what else? A and broken a, and a, a contrite, contrite heart. heart. That's what the that's what the Most High really wants. He wants you to be obedient and understand where you went wrong and right. turn back to being obedient. Right. That's what the Most High wants. I think it's in Hebrews where it says you would rather uh, obedience than sacrifice. It's the same concept that David in the Old Testament is teaching now. Does that make sense? I, I, I just I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah.